Hello, wonderful scholars. My name is Miss Peeker, and I am a third grade humanities teacher on our Lost Hills campus. I'm going to be teaching you about school library information services that you may utilize with our virtual online library, as well as other library techniques you may see if you visit a library elsewhere. We're working hard on getting a physical library on campus, but for now, I think these pieces of information will really help you when we finally get one or if you visit a library elsewhere. Let's get started. Now our presentation today will mostly be geared toward our middle school and high school students who will be utilizing uh, different library resources for research and uh, projects that they may be doing within their classes. But I also wanted to touch on the different eBooks um, that we have available for our elementary students at Wonderful College Prep Academy. These are two really great resources for eBooks for our younger students, uh, K through five. Uh, Raz Kids is included in our Clever by the District. However, Epic Reading uh, teachers will need to create accounts for their classes and add that link onto the Clever themselves. Let's take a look at Epic Reading first. As I said, teachers will have to add this link onto their Clever because the district doesn't necessarily have it on there for us already. Um, how to do this is to go to your teacher page like I have here. Um, I already have Epic Reading on here, but if I needed to add another link or add this, I would go to add link and then it asks for the link that the name of the link and what category you might want to put it under. Um, you can also select an icon or upload your own icon to differentiate the website from the others. In this case, I've put the icon with the book and the yellow background. And so my students know that they can go to this link and it will open up Epic Reading, which is at the getepic.com slash students. Once you're brought to this page, you can either enter your class code or if students have already logged on to the page, they can enter the code themselves. In this case, this is my code for my class. Um, and we would click on that. Once the students are in, they will have their lists of names here and we'll go in as a guest and then it pops up several titles. They have several options for students. They have a search bar here that they can search by author, title, or keyword. They even bring up an entire page of suggestions that students might be looking for, popular searches that have happened previously, like Minecraft, cats, dogs, Halloween, fall. You know, it, right now it is that time of year. So it, a lot of students are searching for stories that match our time. Um, they also have categories such as ELA, English language arts, including chapter books, fables, figurative language, high-low books, listening and reading along, um, and different types of texts like procedural text writing instruction. Um, they go into the science and the arts, social and emotional learning, math, languages, and other interests that students may be interested in. Um, this is just one way that they're able to find a book. They can go to their library and put where they have their favorites or anything that they've recently read or watched shows up on this page so that they can refer back to it. Um, they can go back to explore and they have suggestions here based on their previous reading. Um, they also have a category that will line up to their FNP level depending on where they are in their reading journey. Um, there are comics that they can take look, a look at, graphic novels. Um, they can have books read to them and they also have videos as well as audiobooks. Another thing that I like about Epic is that uh, teachers can send messages and recommendations, letting their students know what they would like. Teachers can also assign specific books 
or book levels to each student. So this is just a great resource for our elementary students to have access to different types of books while we are waiting for our library to be developed. Now let's take a look at Raz Kids. This uh, program is provided by the district, so it will be under our wonderful apps um, in the district app section of our Clever. Students will click on the robot there. They'll enter their teacher's username, um, and these will all be on printouts or can be printed out for students to keep for their records. Once they log in with the teacher's username, they are able to choose their name here. I'm going to choose a particular student and uh, come back with the login so that I can maintain their privacy. Once students are logged in, they can see their stats, how many listens, reads, quizzes they have completed, any other interactivities, how close they are to leveling up, any messages the teachers may have sent to them, um, backgrounds they can choose from, and badges they have earned. Um, when they want to find a book, they just go up to the reading tab. They can either go to their level up section or the reading room. If their teacher has an assignment for them, they will go to reading room. And within the reading room, they have topics, leveled books, early reading, nonfiction, fiction, Spanish or Espanol, uh, poems and songs, packs and passages, graphic and humorous books, classics and trade book quizzes. They also have popular books listed here at their level. And if they have any assignments, those will usually show up at the bottom of the screen in a purple box that say reading assignments. As I mentioned before, teachers can assign different books, especially for guided reading or small groups if they are, have that planned in their schedule. Students can also choose what they would like to read in order to level up to the next section. This particular student has 36 tasks left and they have their options for the different books they can read in front of them in this section here. So if this student wanted to read Maria joins the team, they will listen to it, read it, and complete the quiz. And if they do all three, they get 210 stars, which helps them be able to ad adjust their avatar. So it builds um, a little bit of incentive to be able to do two cool things with your avatar. They can change their background. They can change what their avatar looks like. Um, they can adjust their rocket and see what it's doing. And so those are just some fun incentives for students to be reading on RAS. And this helps teachers keep track of their reading and their leveling as well. Our orientation will include policies, procedures, and examples from Liberty High School's library in Bakersfield, California. First things first, we need to get to know the staff of Liberty High School's library. The head librarian is Trish Froelich. She is a teacher librarian and Mario Lopez is the media tech within the library. You are able to email both of them through their website links included on their staff information page. Now let's take a tour of Liberty High School's library. When you first enter the library, you are greeted by the circulation desk. There are tables and chairs and areas to work, and then to the left, there are the new arrival stacks. And these stacks are organized by genre. Behind these stacks are the book club and reading club books that are available for teachers running either a book or reading club and they can have multiple copies of any book they may need. Beyond and to the left of the book club stacks are several tables with chairs for groups to work and utilize the media services with the televisions on the wall. On the other side of the library we will find more resources for students to utilize. In the middle of course we have the workstations and 
work areas. And then to our left, we have more selections for new arrivals toward the windows. Now we've made it to the fiction stacks, which are organized alphabetically by author. In the corner behind the fiction stacks are more seating for students as well as library storage. Along the back wall behind the stacks is where students can find nonfiction works such as biographies, autobiographies, and other sources of that nature. Resource and reference texts can be found at the very bottom of the last nonfiction stack near the computer lab. To the right of the reference section is the entrance to the computer lab. There are several computers for student use and they can also find reference sources online. We'll discuss this further later in the orientation. Infographics regarding copyright and fair use are found near every printer. Finally, along the counter outside of the computer lab are other references for utilizing the library at its fullest, as well as a computer with printer for quick searches and using the library's database. Now it's time to talk about the print and online resources available at the library. As we mentioned in our tour, there are only two shelves of encyclopedias and other resource materials within the library as print sources. However, the library does provide about seven copies of the Bakersfield Californian, which is a local newspaper. They unfortunately do not provide magazines in print. Many of Liberty High School's resources can be found online. First, you can visit Liberty High School's website at liberty.kernhigh.org. It is really easy to find the library's website. You just click on the academic tab and the library page. Once on the library page, there are many tabs to utilize for the library's resources. On the front page, there is an introduction and um, a QR code where students can reserve books and see what textbooks they already have checked out. They can also see the Library Commons mission statement. Back toward the top of the website, they have the link to bring it back to the home page. They also have a tab for resources, one that will take them directly to ProQuest, teachingbooks.net or Britannica School, their star renaissance testing, and their library lab schedule and the staff in the library. Let's check out the resources first. These online resources are available to all students on Liberty High School's campus as well as throughout the Kern High School District. They have the Kern High School District Library Catalog, EBSCO Host, Gale, including Cameron's collection, Gale Virtual Reference Library, Groiler Online Encyclopedia, Britannica School, Mac and Via, EBSCO Learning Experience, the Prep Step, FactSite, Purdue Online Writing Lab, and ABC Clio Solutions. If they're looking for books online, they also have resources there Project Gutenberg, Audible, Mac and Via, another link down here for their ebooks. There's Open Library, and they can check out fiction titles, um, and they give a few examples here, such as It or 1984 or The Giver. They also have um, a link to the Kern County Library, which has many more resources that can be utilized by students. There are free audio books on Lit2Go and other resources um, down at the bottom. They have listed here online citation creators, academic search engines, free newspapers other than the Bakersfield Californian, and additional resources such as Google Books, Google Image Search, American Memory, which is the Library of Congress on the topic of history, common errors in English usage, and access to other libraries such as the Kern County Library, the Walter Steyern Library at CSU Bakersfield, and 
Bakersfield College, and the Library of Congress. When students click on the Kern High School District Library catalog, it will take them to the full catalog of the entire high school district. This way they can see all of the titles that are available and manage their account, whether they have a biography for their account, their favorites, notifications, any borrowing or booking for computers, um, any records for textbooks. Um, they have a district link here that will show them what's going on with the district along with events and connections with other schools. Students log in with their student information in the corner here and you have to have a high school district account with the current high school district. While the library catalog has many fiction titles and more reference uh, materials online, these other links all require a Liberty High School or Kern High School District email and login, but these are more informational and can also help with uh, study prep for different tests that students take throughout the year, um, especially at the end of the year with the SAT and the pre-SAT or ACT. Um, they also have fact sites and Purdue, on Purdue Online Writing Lab in order to check their citations and understand uh, the correct citing for each type of writing they may be doing. The ProQuest tab has several resources for students to access. It also gives a brief description of what each piece can help them with so they can be more specific and concise in their research. Teaching Books and Britannica School provide encyclopedia information and um, is leveled from the elementary to um, eScholar. Students have access to this as well in order to dive into the beginning of any research project that they may be doing. Now we will be taking a look on how to use different library websites and catalogs. We'll look at both Liberty High School and the Kern County Library because at a certain point, I do not have a login for Liberty High School, so we can look at the public library as well. It is really simple to navigate Liberty High School's website and to find the library website. You'll start out at liberty.kernhigh.org. At the top, there's a menu bar that has different selections for different websites for the entire school. In order to find the library, please scroll to the Academics tab and it will be the third selection of library. Once in the library, they also have a menu to take you to different sections, uh, such as their opening page that explains when they're open, when tutoring is available, um, who is the teacher librarian and how you can reach her, the phone number for the library and their extension. You can also follow the library at liberty underscore commons on Instagram or join their blog, or a Google Classroom code is also added here for information and news about the library. You can also scan below with this QR code to find a book, and it states Liberty High School's Library Commons mission statement. The Liberty Commons Library strives to be the central information center on campus where students, staff, and the community are welcome to come in and enjoy our resources and be effective users of information and ideas. The library encourages everyone to become lifelong learners. And if you need a little bit more detailed information, they have different resources to access. We'll talk further about these later, but the one we are going to focus on right now is the catalog, which is the very first selection on this page. Once we click the button, they, it takes us to the entire Kern High School District's catalog so that students are able to type any search they may be looking for, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, and be able to see if that book is available or put it on hold. Um, they can update their account information, find out more district news, events, and schools. They can choose their language, English, France, and Spanish, um, and they'll need to log in using their Kern High School District login. I do not currently have one of those, so we are just going to focus on the basics here. Um, they can also select which 
library that they are specifically looking for. So if they want to see if it's in the Liberty High School campus library, they can click Liberty. And again, it has the library hours there and you can see a full screen of uh, novels and selections for suggestion that they have new titles, most circulated, the top rated and recently viewed. And when you roll over, as you've seen the last few times I've rolled over a book, it gives a little synopsis and students can mark it as favorites. And if it's not available, they can always come back to it later. Um, on the bottom of each of the selections here, they can see if the book is in with a green circle or checked out and not available. Once we click on a book, you, they can add it to their shelf list, locate it, send a text for a request, add a review, or add to their favorites. Um, it gives title details on the left um, and more information about the authors, the subjects that it's covering, the genre, language, when it was published and by who, um, its description, the ISBN number and the target audience if there is one. It also gives dimensions in case they're needing to know if they can fit it in their backpack. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. They can also do an advanced search and narrow down their search by language, material type, collection type, the audience it's intended for, and once again, it has the locations for these materials. We'll now take a look at the Kern County Public Library System. Their web address is located at www.kerncountylibrary.org. The Kern County Library website is pretty easy to navigate once you know a, an idea of where everything is. Um, first things first is you can sign in with your own account. Um, you have to have a library card for this and you can apply for both a library card, a physical one within the library and an electronic one. It'll take you to the barcode section where you enter that in of your library card and you will add your PIN. This will log you into the Valley Cat system, which has all of um, your personal information. So that's why this is cropped, um, just to keep my information private. But um, you can see your checkouts, both digital and within the library, any holds or any fines that are due. Um, you can also have additional information, contact the library, pay your fines, uh, use their AR book finder for schools that utilize the accelerated reader system, research, locations, and hours. So this is more of the personal areas that are pertain directly to the library patron. Once you're logged in, there are a lot of things that you can utilize on the Kern County Library website. Um, however, if you do not have a library card, they do have a link for you to click on to apply for one. It is really easy. Um, they, you can apply right here and they have different kinds, the full access card and the e-library card. The only thing that um, the e-library card doesn't cover are the physical collections when you're actually in the library. Um, it also gives um, information on what you need, your proof of identity, if you're a non-resident of Kern County, um, your proof of California residency, and um, if you already have an e-library card, you can use that as um, a piece of information to have for your library card. So you'd click on apply for library card and you'd start the self-registration -re form, giving your name, your address, um, and all of your information. And then when you're finished, you hit accept and tell them you're not a robot. And then the process is complete. I believe they'll either give you information on how to access your e-library card um, or tell you the information for picking up a physical library card at your location. Back to our homepage for the Kern County Library, they do have several social media websites that you can 
add on to your own in order to know what's going on at the library and be the most updated. They have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, and this one would be Flickr. So they've got some photos on Flickr there that you can look at and look at the history of the library and uh, the history of Bakersfield and Kern County. Um, they also have their email link right here at the top. Now they have several options for their menu here. Um, adults are able to use the Job Seeker Toolkit. Um, if you're looking for a job, these are great resources to help you find employment that um, they are looking for particular people and keep up to date on training and how to fill out resumes and different things like that. But for our purposes today, I would like us to look at the online resources tab. Once you get into the online resource area, they have things organized pretty simply by subject, by format uh, for kids and for students. Um, they also have every resource listed from A to Z alphabetically. So we can click right in there and it can narrow your search down a little bit. So we have Britannica School, Britannica Escolar, eScholar, um, Brain Fuse, that's helping with a uh, job search and uh, employment, book connections, the newspaper archive, if you're looking for a particular newspaper uh, article um, for the Bakersfield Californian or the Daily Californian as far back as 1892 and over 100 million searchable newspaper pages. So if you're looking for something like that, you can look there. They have Gale options all through all of these topics. So if you really know what your research question is or um, know what you want to learn more about. Gale is split into pretty, pretty concise topics that you can look in and it'll narrow your search quite a bit. Um, they have things for kids still, live tutoring, LinkedIn, again, helping out with those jobs. Um, if you're looking for an obituary, you might be able to find that here, the New York Times how to fund tuition for school and a veterans resource resource center for those who have been in the armed forces. Um, they also have ProQuest, not as extensive as their Gale, but uh, still very helpful and can really narrow down any search that you might be looking for. Um, the Chilton library is actually for maintenance on cars. So if somebody, needs to know how to fix their car and can't need to find a manual of some sort. This is um, really helpful for people who need that. So all in all, the Kern County Library has so many resources available and uh, especially for research and um, fiction and nonfiction alike. Um, here are some other resources for the e-library. Um, Overdrive has ebooks and audiobooks. So does Hoopla and the Cloud Library. I personally use Hoopla on my phone and it is very convenient and um, I really enjoy it. They also have um, In Inky Library and Open Library for even more ebooks and audiobooks. So, really, you can access books at any time, day or night, through the Kern County Library. Another thing that's probably my favorite that I see um, in the little tab on the side here is Snacks in the Stacks. Um, every day during um, its opening time, Meals for Children ages 2 to 18, and you have, you have to go in to get it. And the meals are free, but um, from 12 to 1 at the Beal, and then they have a homework hangout and dinner through October 2021 in Arvin, The Beal, Delano, and Wasco. So it's just another resource. If people need that, they're able to get a free meal at the library.
I hope you enjoyed touring the Kern County Public Library website. Again, it is located at kerncountylibrary.org. They can be emailed with any questions or concerns or wanting more information on their resources at info at kernlibrary.org. The Valley Cat app is also available on smartphones. Now that we know where to search for information, let's talk about how to best search for information by going over some basic online search strategies. The first tool that you need to use in order to make a proper search for information would be to come up with keywords to type into your search engine or database. Um, a keyword is a significant word found in the title or frequently used within the document that represents the content of the entire or whole document. So it can be difficult narrowing down which words you would like to use. So be sure that you understand exactly what you're looking for. And that way you can add keywords to your search in order to narrow down your results. Some helpful tips for searching when you finally find your keywords are using search mechanics like the Boolean operators. The, they are terms to add to your search um, to enhance it and narrow down or widen or broaden what you are looking for. The first Boolean operator is and, including this in your search will yield results that contain all of the search terms. So for example, if you're researching dental care and you want to be specific on dental care for teeth, you would search dental care and teeth. The next Boolean operator is or. So the results when using or in your search will contain any of the search terms, but not necessarily all of them in the same documents. Um, for example, if once again, looking at dental care, you can look, search dental care or teeth or gums. Your results may include all or only one or two of your keywords. And then finally, the Boolean operator not excludes results containing the second search term. So if you are searching dental care, but you do not want to be specific to the gums and you're focusing on other things, you will search dental care, not gums. So the searches will not yield results with the term gum within them. Another tool to utilize when searching with your keywords is the truncation of a word and insertion of wildcard symbols. So when you do that, you allow searches to look for variations on a word. Um, examples of wildcard symbols would be a question mark, an asterisk, a plus sign, or the dollar sign. And we have an example here. If you want to search documents that deal with games, um, you can put your truncation and where a wildcard symbol, you'll cut off part of the word and add that symbol. And then your search results will yield uh, documents with different variations of that word, such as game, gamer, games, or gaming, etc. But you've got to be careful with your uh, truncation because it could add variations of the word that have nothing to do with your research. So be sure that you have um, an appropriate truncation of your word in order to yield the best results. When searching, you might want to utilize a database, which would be more geared toward what you are searching for with your research question. Um, a database is where information is stored and it provides a way to retrieve it. Um, within the database, you have fields which house different types of data. So those fields include things like author, title of the article, the name of the journal, publication information, subject headings and abstracts. These are all fields and subjects and terms that will help you find the most relevant results in your search. So it's important to include as many of those known fields as possible to get your results that will work for your research question or research project. 
Combining all these search strategies um, by including keywords with Boolean operators, truncation and wildcard symbols, and searching within a database or search engine would create a search string. And that would help yield the most relevant results to your query. This allows you to conduct proper research with concise and thorough methods. You'll be able to put the pieces together in order to answer your query. Now it's time to go over copyright and plagiarism guidelines and policies throughout the Kern High School District and Liberty High School's campus. The Kern High School District Board Policy BP6162.6 covers the use of copyrighted materials. It can be a little heavy to read all of it, but here are some highlights. District staff and students are expected to maintain the highest ethical standards in using copyrighted materials. It is each staff member's responsibility to adhere to the provisions of federal copyright law, board policy, and administrative regulation. And at no time shall it be necessary for a district employee to violate copyright laws in order to perform his or her duties. The superintendent or designee shall ensure that the district observes all publisher licensing agreements between the vendors and the district, including monitoring the number of users permitted by an agreement. Teachers, librarians, and special media specialists who indulge in this illegal practice do so at their own risk. The superintendent or designee shall ensure that staff and students receive information and training about copyright laws and penalties for violating such laws. In the library, you can find two posters to help you better understand free speech, copyright, and fair use. Let's take a look at our first poster and break down what each of those things entail. First up is free speech. Free speech is covered under the First Amendment, which guarantees important freedoms, including the freedom of speech. However, it does not cover hate speech. Next up is copyright. Copyright provides protection to the creators for a limited time to let them receive payment for their work. It also creates incentive for authors and creators to devote time and money to producing new works. In this way, it encourages speech and creativity. Then there is fair use. Fair use allows limited use of copyrighted work without permission. Certain works that fall under commentary, criticism, parody, teaching, or transformative works allow for new works to be made. This also promotes creativity and innovation on previous work. Toward the bottom of our first copyrightandcreativity.org poster, it has a helpful question answer guide on whether you can or cannot use a work without permission. So just ask yourselves these questions when attempting to cite or use a source within work that you are creating. Is it old enough to be in the public domain? If it is, go ahead and use it. However, if it is not, ask yourself, did the creator choose a Creative Commons license to allow for sharing without permission? If they did, great, it's yours to use. However, if they did not, you must weigh the following options together to decide if you have a legitimate fair use claim. You must think about these three categories in order to determine if you have a legitimate fair use claim. First, you must think about the purpose and character of your use. Is your new work transformative because it adds new expression to the original, like a parody, or maybe it's being used for a new purpose like teaching? How much of the work are you using? The amount and substance. Did you use more than you needed to? Did you take the heart of what that original piece is? The nature of the original. Is the original work highly creative or is it just a bunch of information? And finally, the effect on the market. Could your use affect the market by substituting the original in the marketplace? After asking yourself those questions, you can determine if it is fair use. If so, once again, go ahead and use it. If not, you need to be sure to get permission from the author. Let's break down our second poster, 10 things you should know about copyright. The first five things you need to know about copyright explain what copyright protects, which is creative work, yours, mine, everyone's. Number one, we are all consumers and creators. As consumers, we watch movies, read books, and absorb other types of media. As creators, we take photos, write songs, make videos, and post them online or share with others. Number two, 
Copyright protects creative work so others can't generally copy, share, or perform other people's work without permission. Number three, copyright is derived directly from the Constitution. Its purpose is to promote creativity. The idea of letting everyone decide what happens to their works will encourage creators to keep creating. Number four, all creative work is protected by copyright as soon as it is written down, recorded, or saved. And that's not just for the professionals, it's for everyone. And finally, copyright infringement is the copying or sharing of other people's work without their permission. This includes downloading works without permission and uploading works for others to download without permission from the creator. The next five things you need to know about copyright is that copyright doesn't cover everything. It does have its limitations. It does provide a lot of protection, but also things like facts, ideas, and U.S. government documents do not fall under copyright. Number seven, fair use, which we've talked about earlier in this presentation, allows for people to copy and reuse copyrighted materials without the artist's permission under particular circumstances that are still fair to the creator. Number eight, when you do reuse parts of someone else's work for a school project, like using images or songs for a presentation in class, that falls under fair use as well. You don't need the author's permission to use their work for that. Number nine, copyright doesn't last forever. It does have a time limit and will eventually expire. Then the work will fall into what is called public domain. Works in the public domain are free to reuse and share how you'd like. And finally, there is also something called a Creative Commons license. Some creators who are happy to share their creative work will license their work under what they call Creative Commons. You can find millions of Creative Commons work that are free to share and reuse. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding copyright or plagiarism, please be sure to contact your teacher or librarian at your earliest convenience. Let's take a moment and talk about the difference between plagiarism and copyright infringement. Plagiarism is using someone else's ideas and words and passing it off as your own, giving no credit, claiming that it was your original idea or your original art piece. Now, not all copying falls under copyright law. We know that some of that falls under fair use. For example, many students studying the arts are given assignments to copy or recreate art pieces. This is not copyright infringement or plagiarism because it is a creation of a new work. However, should copyright infringement occur, it is determined by a court of law should the original creator pursue legal, legal action. Plagiarism and copyright infringement could be considered cheating. Plagiarism definitely is. And consequences vary between school districts and grade levels. Middle and high schoolers may receive a failing grade on the assignment and colleges, many colleges across the country usually have a zero tolerance policy on cheating and plagiarism. So be sure to always cite your sources and give proper credit where credit's due. However, that does not always protect against copyright infringement. So just be sure to take that step and you're headed in the right direction. If you need any help, don't hesitate to ask the library staff, no matter which library you might be utilizing. If you're on Liberty High School's campus, you can contact their teacher librarian, Mrs. Froelich, or their media tech, Mr. Lopez. Their emails are available on screen, and they can also be found at the circulation desk located directly in front of the entry doors of the library. If you're at the Kern County Library, there are several librarians there ready to help you with any query you may have on your research. Thank you for following along in our library orientation today. If you have any further questions, please contact me at kaylee.peaker at wonderfulcollegeprep.org. If you'd like to know more about Wonderful College Prep Academy, please visit their website at wonderfulcollegeprepacademy.org. And for Liberty High School, please visit liberty.kernhigh.org. To get your own library card and find any other books you may need, please visit the Kern County Library website at kerncountylibrary.org. All presentations, slides, and templates 
used in this presentation were created by Slides Go, including icons by Flat Icon, infographics, and images by Free Pick.